expecting a harvest, it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of self-control, a lot of attentiveness. If you notice how the Lord pit before prayer, he pit watching. That means to pay attention, to look well to your ways. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter. Um, let's go to Proverbs chapter. Because the word of God talks about this as well. And if you want to be a friend of God, read the book of Proverbs. If you want to be a friend of God, read the book of Proverbs. If you want to be a friend of God. If you want to be God's friend, read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15 says, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Are you catching this? It said, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man, he looketh well to his going. What this means is, that a man that's prudent, he studies things out very closely. He looks at, okay, even though this seemeth right, is it right? Even though this seemeth good, is it good? Even though this look appropriate, is it appropriate? So, so he is, uh, and then not only, I, I want to show you this because it's so powerful. There are millions of people that get to this state of brain uh, evaluation. But the next part is going to God directly. The Bible said, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may see, receive grace and help in the time of need. So there's millions of people that go through this evaluation, but they don't go to God after this. They take in their own what we call morality, morals. And so they make the decision without getting wisdom. The Bible said, in all you're getting a wisdom, get understanding. And then in James chapter 1, verse 5 and on, it says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberally to all. Word of God said in several texts that God is not a respecter of persons, which means that if you come to him, he's going to give you wisdom. Then the Bible says in the Gospels, any man that cometh to the father, he will in no wise cast out. I mean, that if you come to him in prayer about something, he not going to ignore you and leave you and say, well, I don't like you because you're fat. Or I don't like you because you're black. I don't like you because you're white. I don't like you because you're Hispanic. I don't like you because of your culture that you grew up. Are you seeing this? So to get a harvest, it takes this learning. And it's not, it's not common to live in the hundredfold and live in the thousandfold, though it, it was supposed to be very easy. And it is e very easy. But the hardness of man's heart blocks this. What is a hard heart? Well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. I could tell you off of wisdom, but let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. Because a hard heart is a contrary heart. A hard heart means God tell you that the, the sun is purple and you say, no, it's orange. And God says, how is it orange? You said, because that's what they told me in school. And God said, but who created the sun? You did. Well, I said it's purple. No, it's not purple, it's orange. Well, who told you it was orange? Man. Who made the sun? You, Lord. <laughs>
Look at what uh, the word of God says right here in verse 12. It says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you with an evil heart of unbelief. Look at verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily. While it is called today, that means while you got time, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So what is a hard heart? It is a sinful heart. It is a heart that goes opposite to what God says. Now, saints, I, 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 this is so amazing. How does God test you in life? Because the Bible says in Psalm chapter 11 that God tests the righteous. So how does God test you in life? He speaks to you in this life and he tells you things. Nighttime starts at 9 p.m. No, it starts at 6 p.m. Who told you it starts at 6 p.m.? That's what they told us. It starts at 6 p.m. No, night starts at 9 p.m. And when he speaks that night starts at 9 p.m., now you have a test given to you on are you going to plant your faith in 9 p.m., which come from God, or 6 p.m. that come from the enemy? The Bible say also in Romans, I think that's Romans chapter 3 or Romans chapter 4, it said that let God be true. And every man a liar. So in life, what God does is he'll come to you with different doctrines. So the disciples heard Jesus tell them things that other people deemed was wrong. That's why they came to the disciples of Jesus and said, why you don't wash your hands before you eat? Are you? Uh, listen, come, 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 come close. They asked Jesus' disciples, why you don't wash your hands before you eat? Saints, I want you to look at me. I don't wash my hands before I eat. I don't wash my hands before I eat. They asked Jesus' disciples, how come everybody, you are, you are the only ones that got defiled hands and y'all eating food. You don't got no training. You don't got no teaching. Meanwhile, Jesus' way is right. But they're rebuking Jesus' way and say, no, we've been told you wash your hands. Y'all are defiled. This is in your Bible, by the way. And they're rebuking Jesus' men that he's training not to wash their hands. So what is evil? Evil is a way that goes against Jesus and what he teaches. He said this, but you say, no, it's better like this. This is why we don't have many friends of God. Because men think that they know better than God. The Lord said, don't talk to this person. Flash forward nine years later, you crying, talking about they hurt me. They stole everything from me. They did this to me. God told you nine years ago to disconnect from the same person. So what do you want? Do you want God to hold a ceremony and grieve your losses because you disobeyed his way? God can't test you unless he has given you a word on how something is, on how something should be. And he tests you because he examines did you pit your faith in what I already said? 
The Lord tells somebody, you are healed from cancer. Fast forward six months later, they said, I'll never get rid of this cancer. It's just, it's just a pain in the butt. Six months later, here's the document that you don't believe what I said. Because I told you six months ago that you healed from the cancer. Six months later, I'll never be free from this cancer. It's just a pain in the butt. Your words expose your faith. If you don't have faith, you won't have words in agreement with God. Your words will be in disagreement with God. That's why God, he sends Gabriel to speak to Zacharias. Zacharias tells the angel, I don't believe what you're telling me. The angel says, okay, you'll be mute. Because if I don't mute you, you're going to keep on talking against my will. If I don't mute you, you're going to keep on talking against my harvest. Because Gabriel came to announce the harvest. Gabriel came to announce the harvest. Elisha is prophesying that the famine is over. There's about to be abundance. And there's an officer standing at the gate and says, ha, ha, ha. You are, you are crazy. This is not going to happen. You, do you look at the famine around us? We in a great drought. This, is, this ain't going to happen. And Elijah points at the man and says, surely you will not see it take place. That man dropped dead. He never saw the word of the Lord come to pass because God spoke through a man and he took it casually and he spoke against it. And he was in disagreement to it. And he lost his soul. That man went to hell. The Bible said Jesus did not many miracles in the place because of their doubt and unbelief. Does, does that mean that Jesus didn't have miracle power? No. That means that Jesus was disgusted that they didn't pit their faith. In his word. So he was not motivated to fix their problems. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. How much miracles are going past you? Because you irritate God. How much miracles have you missed in your life? Could this be why you have bodily problems? Could this be why you have financial problems? Could this be how you have, why you have mental problems? Could this be why you get depressed? Could this be why you get lonely? Do, could this be why you feel bad for yourself? You have self-pity parties? Because the truth of the matter is, you're missing the timing of your harvests. What happens when someone misses their harvest? You have to become a slave to sadness because the thing that created that was created to make your joy full, you missed it. Remember what the Lord told his disciples, ask what you will that your joy may be full. So harvests are carrying the next chapter of your joy, which means the next chapter of your strength. So could it be when you enter into diverse temptation and all type of weaknesses and flaws start rising up in you and your mind is going through stuff? I wish I had this and it's all toxic. I wish I could do this and it's all toxic. I wish I was with this person. It's all toxic. I wish I had this happen in my life and it's all toxic and it's outside of the will of God. Could it be because you missed the harvest? And the harvest was carrying your strength because wherever there's joy, there's strength. Joy is the translation of strength. It's the definition of strength and strength. It is the overcoming of evil deeds, wicked acts, wrong decisions. So think about it. How many times Satan takes advantage of you missing the harvest because of your mouth, because of your movements, because of your mindset. And when you miss the harvest, now you have to go into a place where your mind 
is deprived of its energy, its strength, because it didn't receive the schedule of God. Zachariah's mouth reopened as soon as he spoke the words that God wanted to hear. Just think about it. So he went through a season of unnecessary consequence simply because he doesn't have agreement with God. That's the whole point. The Bible said, how could two walk together lest they be agreed? How could two walk together lest they be agreed? The Bible said, now you understand why the scripture said, if two or three of you touch in agreement on anything, I will do it. Because God loves agreement. That's what he loves. He wants people to agree with him. That's what faith is. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because God looks at who agrees with him. You don't agree with him. You can't please him. He not getting pleased by you. If two or three of you all touch on anything, I will do it. That's a bizarre statement. Because God's saying, if I could see agreement between two or three individuals in me, there's no doubt about it, I'm going to do it. Then what did the word of God say? In Psalm 133, how precious it is, how precious it is for brethren, brothers to dwell together in unity. And it talks about the anointing flowing through down Aaron's beard. What? See, I want you to catch this. What is the real mystery about the anointing flowing down Aaron's head, down to his beard, and it's flowing down to his, to, to, all the way down to his feet? The anointing is not being interrupted by disagreement. Disagreement, it disrupts the flow of God's power. Disagreement affects God's mood negatively. It diverts God's attention. It stops favor. Disagreement. When the Bible said that the, the oil is flowing down Aaron's beard, what is saying that nothing is stopping the anointing from traveling. It's getting to its destination. It's accomplishing its effectiveness. It is successful in getting what it came to do done. And there's nothing interrupting it. So just imagine how many times do you go through unnecessary seasons because you're not in agreement with God? God told you that he didn't want you to raise that child. You think that you're supposed to raise the child because you you the parent of God. You you the best parent. You know how to parent better than God. But God said to give the child over to Eli. Oh, no, I don't want to give it over to Eli. I pray for this child. No, Hannah, even though you pray for the child, you got to learn to agree with God that God don't see you fit as no mama. God didn't make you to be no mama. You wanted the barrenness to go. You wanted a child to come, but God didn't create you to be a mama. Well, how does he not create me to be a mama? Hey, how come he don't create me to be a mama? Because I got eggs inside of my stomach. I got eggs inside of my stomach. I got eggs inside of my stomach. And how did he create me to be a, 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 a mama? Because I got a tun tun. Look, I got tun tun right here. I got a tun tun. I'm looking at a tun tun every day. That means a baby's supposed to come out of this tun tun. I got a tun tun, so the baby's supposed to come out this tun tun. That's what, that's, that, look, look. And, and all these things, God defies the logic of Hannah. She carries the child for all those months, goes into child labor, pushes the child out. And God said, ship the child to somebody else. You're not raising the child. That's not your child. It's Eli's child. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. The man that I have the child with was Elkanah. Yeah, both of y'all are still not the parents. The parent of this child is Eli. Because I didn't schedule for you to raise this child. 
I'm telling you, your life does not start until you learn to agree with God. You see this person right here? You know why this person is so powerful? Because I agree with the Holy Ghost. That's the only secret. It's not prayer. Because most people that pray are fools. It's not fasting. Because most people that fast are fools. It's not reading the Bible. Because most people that read the Bible are fools. It's agreement with God. The Bible says when the Son of Man comes back to the earth in, in, in the book of Luke, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find those that agree with him? So what is God's only a pleasure? Agreement. That's what belief is. It's agreement. 